Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by Angie Bretz, a fellow massage therapist in Kennesaw, Georgia. Welcome to the show. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Thank you Thank for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. You're you're here in the ongoing series to interview 50 massage therapists from all 50 states. So thank you for representing Georgia and your business there in Georgia is the Healing Hippie Massage and Holistic Health. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> love it. So I, I love to start with a little, little origin story, just your story into massage before we talk about Georgia. That sounds great. So, um, you know, I was in the service for 10 years in the United States Coast Guard. Um, I got out married children and, um, you know, just kind of knew that I needed another path, another career path. And I was always a helper. I think most of us, when we look back on our life as, you know, now as massage therapists, we were always some kind of helper growing up. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's going to sound super crazy, but I was literally woken up in the middle of the night multiple times with this sort of something driving me towards massage, which I found really odd because I was never that person growing up that, you know, was always touchy feely. Oh, I massage my mom's shoulders all the time. You hear people, uh, massage therapists talk about, you know, having this their whole life. Um, and I just decided to listen with it, listen to it and go with it. And literally, you know, a week later after having this, what I like to call a calling, um, I called our local school and there was a, a class getting ready to start in a week and I enrolled and then the rest is history. <laughs> That's great. And, and the healing hippie, your, your current practice, did that, that's newer. That's not where you started necessarily. It is not where I started yeah. yet. This is newer. So I, I actually graduated in uh, Charleston, South Carolina from the school massage there. Um, and I had a practice there called Balance Your Body Massage. Um, once I graduated, I knew that I really didn't want to work for anyone else. I knew I had my own vision of what massage was to look like for me. Mm -hmm. So other than a very, very short six month stint in my eight year career, I worked for someone, but for the, for the rest of that time, I've had my own practice. Yeah. So I moved here to Georgia back in 2014. Um, and I started working in 2015. And then I established the Healing Hippie. Cool. Okay, so Georgia. What does it take to get a license in Georgia? What does it take to maintain a license in Georgia? You know that, like the hour requirement or anything like that? Uh, it's a 500 hour but, program. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and then it, are, are they taking the Amblex there? Yes, they take the Amblex. Yeah. And in order for us to maintain, we need 24 credit hours every two years. Um, okay. 12 of those are mandated to be hands-on live classes. Um, and then the other 12 are sort of at our leisure um, to take, you know, ethics and business and marketing and self-care, things like that. Yeah. All right. So it pr seems pretty average in, from what I've been hearing. It's not, yes. it's not on the high side. It's, I guess it's probably on the lower side in terms of hours anyway. It is. Yeah. So I think we have, some, you know, some 750 to 1,000 you know, our programs yeah. around the States. Yeah, for sure. And then some with zero, which is. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I've been asking about uh, the, the likelihood it's, which seems unlikely by and large from the opinions I've gotten, but do you, have you ever thought about what a, a national program would look like, or do you think that would be a good idea, bad idea, impossible idea? Um, you know, I think it's, I think it's an impossible idea. I mean, you yeah. still have states right now. Now, you know, you still have states right now, like you said, that have no requirement, um, all the way to states that ha might have a thousand hours. And um, I think uh, that would be a really, really, really hard task um, at hand to bring a fully national certified program. Yeah. Um, I think it's important for the states to maintain each of their states' uh, licensure. Okay. So I guess maybe I just like the idea of traveling the country and being free to practice everywhere, but I love that idea. And I thought about that when, you know, when we were going to talk about this, but I don't think that that's, you know, they don't do that for any service industry for the most part. 
You're not going to find yeah. a national certification anywhere for any type right. of profession. Yeah. Um, they're going to be governed by the states. I do like the idea of, you know, the NCBTMB having this extra oomph to your practice yeah. uh, that you can be nationally certified with this, you know, recognizable certification. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important to keep it within each state. Yeah. I wonder if some states like have a system by which a traveling massage therapist could like get a temporary authority to pray. That'd be kind of neat. To, I just like part of my mission is to travel the country and eventually the world to record full length bodywork sessions to share them with the public so that people can see what different modalities look like and what it's like with different practitioners and to, for example, you know, capture Thai massage in Thailand and, sh and share that. So to me, like the ability to go out there and capture would be really wonderful, but I guess I wouldn't be the one doing the work in that scenario anyway. So <laughs> yeah. it's all good. So, okay. Um, Georgia, what is the state of your state and how are you doing there with so, the current uh, crisis? Yes, we are in a uh, shelter in place at the moment mm -hmm. until um, it was until April 23rd, which put us around, a, you know, three week to a month mark. It's been extended to April 30th. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know what if other states have shelter in place or not, but shelter in place for us is basically no unnecessary travel, no unnecessary trips to anything. It's just staying home as often as possible. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, are they are there enforcement around like getting fresh air and taking walks and? Um, no, there's no enforcement here for that. Uh, our governor actually left all of our state parks open. Okay. Um, all the county parks have been shut down and. Um, but again, they're still sort of encouraging um, uh, staying at home. You know, unlike California, where they're really actually out enforcing legally, um, we have a little bit more uh, give and take here. And then each of our counties, by the way, are designating like our business licensure. So for me here, um, my county designation um, has said we, you know, we cannot work under massage therapy. And our license can be revoked if they find out we're working. So I know some states, you know, you'll have some massage therapists that say, oh, I'm essential. I can still work um, here in my county. We cannot, but it doesn't mean that other counties might still be able to work um, if they were considered essential under that county. Oh, interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. All those different levels at play. Yeah. Here yes. in Oregon at the state level where we've been deemed non-essential, which- gotcha. It just hurts a little bit, but it really does, <laughs> you know, but I like to say, you know, we all as massage therapists, we do consider ourselves essential and because, because we know, we know the benefits, we know the importance yeah. of it, but truly we're long-term essential. Yeah. So to not receive your massages will set people back in their health a little bit, but it doesn't mean we can't get that health portion back when we, yeah. uh, when we get back to work. And so, um, you know, I respect that decision. And I actually voluntarily closed my practice a week before I was mandated to because I felt I felt the pull. Uh, I thought it was important for me to to do that. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so we are interrupting the normal flow of what we recorded because since we did our original recording, the governor of Georgia came out with some new recommendations. Is that the right word, Angie? Um. Ideas? I'm not sure what the official, well, why don't you just tell me what happened? Sure. So um, we currently have um, had shelter in place orders until April 30th, um, which also fall under the di social distancing regulations. Um, but come Monday, the governor decided to start opening up the economy. Um, and one of those things he addressed was opening up uh, massage therapy. And what they're essentially doing is asking us to continue social distancing <laughs> practices Okay. Um, for all these. I know you look very confused and just, which is what it has done to the rest of the world. So let me just, can I just read this and it might, it might help a little bit. Just before you read that, just yeah. so I, uh, my context is you can go back to work, but you still have to maintain social distancing. So what they did is they did not clarify any specific professions. They said, oh. these are we're going to allow to open on Friday, 
and we still want you to do your best to maintain social distancing. And okay. so clearly the professions like myself or the hairstylist or the tattoo places mm-hmm. are scrambling to figure out what that means for us. Okay. And so that's the position we're in. So basically, um, according to the governor's office, minimum basic operations include, but are not limited to screening workers for fever and respiratory illness, enhancing workplace sanitation, wearing masks and gloves, and separating workplaces by six feet. So this was just a very general blanket statement for all the businesses he is allowing to open, which do include restaurants. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess I could see how a restaurant could pull that off, but not someone whose job it is to, I mean, there's zero inches between me and my clients, right? Like, <laughs> Correct. So this has sort of left everyone in a state of um, confusion, especially in our, in our profession. And so, um, you know, we're, you know, we're trained in pathology and cross-contamination. We know how to be sanitary. That's just part of our profession. And this For is sure. something we've always done. Um, but now we're almost left to say, well, are, do we feel comfortable opening our businesses? And if we are comfortable, what measures should we have in place? Should we be wearing masks and gloves? Because there is no guidance. And unfortunately, yeah. um, even as I continue to research for Georgia, through the uh, Georgia Department of Public Health, through Georgia Massage Therapy Boards, there is no guidance. So we are sort of left to figure out what that means for us and what we think uh, that means for our clients. Hmm. <laughs> so that, I have spent the really... last two days trying to decide, okay, when, when do I feel comfortable opening? And when I open, what does that mean for me? Um, And so I'm in that process right now. And everybody in your state must be going through that. And it sounds like there's probably a lot of very strong feelings on either end. Uh, There really are. Um, And there, you know, there is some guidance from, um, I'm hearing coming down from other like corporate companies, like their corporate uh, policies are being put in place. So I know we're talking about massage therapy, but the only example I have is for hairstylists. Um, okay. You know, a friend works for a corporation and it's, they have come down and said, if you're going to cut hair, you know, you can only have so many chairs open. You need to wear gloves. You need to wear masks. Your clients need to wear masks. You know, this is what you need to do in between each client if you want to stay open. Wow. So people like me, who is an independently owned business, that those decisions are left to me. Um, like a lot yeah. of us have our own businesses. Yeah. So it's like, to me, those measures make it so that it just seems like such a hurdle that I'd rather not be like, it affects the experience so much. I'd rather just wait it out. Like the mask and the gloves and the having a client wear a mask. Uh, yeah. That's- and I'm seeing it across the massage boards too. People are talking about it and they have real strong feelings about it. And, um, are the, are the, does the tendency to the people who want to jump back in, is it, I mean, it's understandable. Is it the financial side of like, I just, I have to get back to work no matter what? Um, I think it is for some people. Um, I'll use myself as an example. I want to jump back in um, and I'm ready to jump back in. I don't know about Friday per se, um, but it has nothing to do with finances. Um, I have a great successful business, but I also have a successful husband and, you know, my not working does not affect our household income. Um, but I am not in fear of this thing. And I think fear is guiding a lot of people and that's okay, but it's your level of fear that is guiding, um, what, you know, what you are doing to move forward. I am not fearful, but I also want to be, um, responsible Mm-hmm. And so how do you put those two things together and know you're doing the right thing? And yeah. that's, that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. I've seen other recommendations that may, may, we're trying to make the case for not, not really getting back to business as usual until we can start to have everyone tested and you need to prove that you're, you're all in the all clear and that your client is in the all clear. And I just, just feels like we'll never get back to work if we if we go that route. But I I don't really I'm not fully up to speed on what where the testing status is and 
sounds really challenging. Well, and that's very, that's, you know, a very uh, broad topic that's, you know, very individualized to by state. Um, yeah. But I think at this point, you know, for those trying to make this decision, um, it's important to communicate with your clients because you both have that responsibility. And if you decide to open, but your client is not comfortable coming in, then then they're able to make that choice. If they're comfortable coming in and you're comfortable with them coming in, then you've both made the informed decision to know what's happening in the world and what position you are in getting this work. Um, again, it depends on how you feel. Is that risky or is it not? Um, and so I think just communicating with the clients is, is going to be really important and can probably help in a lot of the decision making. Yeah. Well, new information is coming out all the time. Hopefully we don't have to record another interjection uh, <laughs> before we release this episode. <laughs> yes. But uh, uh, for, for now, we'll, we'll jump back into our original recording and finish this episode all about Georgia. Awesome. Well, thanks for asking me to come back on and, and get you up to date. Thanks so much. So what are you doing with yourself in the downtime? How are you spending your days? And I wait, I, I'd actually, before we talk about what you're doing specifically, I think this, I think you wrote this. And if this is to be attributed to somebody else, tell me, but I, I like the tone that you set with this post that you put. So I'm going to read it to you if that's not weird. Oh, sure. Yeah, go ahead. I think you wrote this. This is not the time to feel guilty about feeling the feels. This is the time to welcome the highs and lows, listen to them, process them, accept them as your current reality. This is an unprecedented time and there is no right answer on how to cope. That's you? That, that was me. That was great. <laughs> yes, I, um, you know, I, I'm very, um, very open, very transparent with my clients. I'm a very emotional person. Um, so I've been feeling the feels like everybody else. And, yeah. you know, we're, you know, we're always telling our clients how to maintain their self care and their health and mental health, physical health, spiritual health. And they kind of look to us as the experts, but you know, when we're in this moment, there's some of us that are having a hard time with those things, including myself, right? I have all the tools. I know how to do all the things, mm -hmm. but this is also a trying time for us. So I was just saying, you know what, if you're not that person, that's, not being overly productive and you're not, you know, you're not working on your business eight hours a day now that you have this spare time and you're not cleaning out your closets, it's okay. Yeah. If you're having to sit there and just be with it and, and not doing those things, that's okay too. There's no right or wrong answer to what we should be doing during this time because everybody has a different feeling and, and how it's affecting them. So I'm kind of in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> some days I'm motivated and some days I'm not, but I just, I, you know, I want to just put it out there, my feelings. And I want my clients to know that it's okay that they're not, you know, stretching every single day or yeah. <laughs> if they're not doing the things we taught them to do, because this is unprecedented times. Yeah, I will. Uh, thank you. I saw, I was, I looked at your Instagram and you had posted a QL stretch that reminded me to do it. So I did it. And that, and I think, oh, yay. It's <laughs> <that's> another <laughs> awesome. example. It's like, I know to do that, but I don't do it all the time. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> that was actually a good reminder and uh, helpful. So thank you. Um, what do you think is going to become of our profession coming out of this? How do you think it will change for the good, for the bad? Uh, I, I really think it's going to change for the better, but I truly don't believe it's going to change that much. Okay. Right. So we hear people talking about now these added or extra sanitary measures. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, a general rule of thumb, we are very sanitary. We touch a lot of bodies all yeah. day long. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really see this changing a ton. I see some added maybe some added measures that maybe over the years you get a little more complacent about. Um, yeah. I, I foresee many massage therapists ordering a, a, a fresh arsenal of blankets to make sure they can change the blanket every time. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I've seen that discussed and I, I yeah. think it's a fabulous idea. Yeah. Um, There's no reason. You know, think, not to, yeah. Yeah. Or I've seen the, you know, if you use an eye pillow, um, I've seen people talk about using that eye pillow, touching people after person after person after person, or, yeah. you know, that five minutes in between clients and things like that. But I think I'm, most of that is a lot of your, um, 
your places, your doctor's offices, your chiropractor's offices, maybe your spas where they're flipping very quickly. And I think yeah. that's where you're going to see a lot of changes. Um, but for people in independent businesses like myself, um, I have 30 minutes in between every client, which allows me all the extra time to have all the cleanliness. Uh, yeah, that's what know, I do place. too. I am you a little you? bummed. I, I started using a weighted blanket for the for portion of my sessions. Yes. But the notion of washing a weighted blanket five times a day is just impossible. So I think I just have to cut it. No, you know what? We need to talk after this interview. Oh, good. I've got you a have ideas? alternative for you. Yes. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is it too is it too like um I mean, other massage therapists might hear this. Is it is it too specific or? No, uh, well, I don't know the name of it, but they they're basically like little weighted lap, um, like little lap blankets. They're no, you know, they're no bigger than like eighteen inches long and maybe twelve inches wide. Oh. and it's weight and it's also weighted, and then you, they have little covers that you can put over them, so you can oh, simply neat. put it. You know, it still gives the client security if they're supine that you can lay it across their abdomen or you can lay it across their the top of their thighs or wherever they need that comfort or when they're prone, you know, you put it across the low back for that little extra weight. So you oh, still cool. get that sensory weight security feeling, but in a smaller version. Yeah. Not quite the full like effect yes. of it. Yeah. But yeah. You no, know, that's, oh, and I, you can just slip a pillowcase right over it. Oh, neat. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. we'll have to figure out where the, where I can find that at. That'd be great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, another co a question that I, I wanted to start asking in these interviews is I feel like there's a certain amount of collective wisdom that we should be tapping into as body workers and massage therapists. So, uh, and however you want to react to this, but is there anything before you had to shut down? Is there anything that had been coming up a lot in your practice? Anything you'd do you, do you ever notice trends like, oh, a lot of people are coming in with this very specific sort of pain in a similar place. Do you ever notice trends like that? I, yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> and if funny you, you do, said that. So you do, what have you, what had you been seeing? Um, so, you know, I have, I have a lot of people with chronic pain. My general approach is a medical, is medical massage. Um, but, you know, in the last year and even more so in the last six, seven, eight months, I've noticed sort of the connection to these people and their emotional states. Mm. Um, and it's really been driving me more into um, diving into a little bit of their emotional state, but not outside of my scope of practice. I'm not cool. being a psychologist in any way, but when I'm hearing somebody say, okay, I've got this chronic low back pain, I've been to the doctor and I've been to X, Y, Z and nobody has any answers for me. I don't know why it exists, right? And they don't fall into any specific pattern, but yet I'm listening to this person um, talk about uh, their stress levels are through the roof. They don't sleep, they're insomniacs because their minds are going crazy or, or whatnot. And just little things like that where I've started to notice how incredibly important their emotional being is onto their physical being. Um, that is the trend I've been seeing. So I'll tell you with that, I have been way more specific in doing psoas work, mm. not just from the, you know, origin insertion muscle side, but from that emotional being side, um, seeing as the psoas is the muscle of the soul. I think it's really important to, to work on. So that's been my trend. Interesting. Yeah. Very cool. And, and would you postulate anything you you feel like you're likely to see when you can get back to it? What do you think this collective experience is going to manifest in people once you can finally start seeing clients again? Um, I think people are going to sort of um, see the importance of massage just maybe a little step more, if that makes any sense. You yeah. Know, so uh, some people still see it as that luxury and you, you, you know, you come in and you feel good. But I think when you take that away out of, out of the healthcare and then you put it back in, that's when people are going to realize, wow, that really made a difference when I was going every week and every month. And I yeah. think there's going to be an at just, just an added um, piece of this to, to the general population's healthcare. Um, we're yeah. going to see the difference in their bodies, the difference in their minds. And I think that's going to, 
it's going to help us. Yeah. I think we're yeah, going to be in a good sure place. The awareness and like the, the deprivation from it. Yes. I just keep wondering if, if the, the collective, I mean, it's going to hit everyone differently, but how, how is this like the, the anxiety and the tension going to like, what are we as therapists going to see in people that maybe we weren't seeing before once we can finally get our hands back to work? Does that make sense? Like, it, uh, I think yeah. you're going to see people in a little bit of a more emotional state. This is affecting, this is affecting a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and um, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, people needing to get out of some ruts and things like that. That's pretty much what I see happening. Yeah. Well, Angie Bretz, the healing hippie massage and holistic health in Georgia. Thanks for being on here to talk about Georgia and massage therapy. And uh, we'll chat a little bit after this recording, but thanks for being here. And that's it. That's the end of the All show. All right. Hey, I appreciate you having me.